soon, September 21st. Our first clam dig of the season. It's about a little after 6 a.m. Noon is still shining bright on the water. Folks down there digging by lantern light. We may try that too, but um, we'll see. Tuesday morning. Most of the flat bellies are at work. A lot of us down here taking advantage of this beautiful morning. Moon hasn't set yet. Clams. Clam sign is everywhere. Give you a quick look at that. There's your typical. Um, well, that's a crater show. Crater show. Crater show. Well, good. Dig one of these craters here. I didn't have the camera turned on on the last one. So Tony got one clam to go. She counted only had 19, so one more to go. She can get this bruiser. As Dusty would call it, maybe it's the Jasper clam, the medical yeah. giant clam. Uh-oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Nice clam. Uh, number 20. Number 20. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to show you how we clean them. Uh, folks do it different ways, I guess. And get focused in on that. So yep. Nice jumbo clam out of Connie's bucket. I have several jumbos. Some people like to dip them in hot water, I guess, to get them out of the shell, but it's so quick and easy without putting them in hot water. But anyway, I'll show you how we do it. And, you know, ideally you start with a beautiful clean clam like that. It's not all busted up, so it's pretty easy. So once you run, get your knife in there, they'll start, they'll start closing up and make it really hard. So... There's a membrane that attaches to the shell right along there, and there's a muscle right down in there and right down in this area. So what I do is I make a quick cut down that membrane and, and then cut that rear muscle before the thing can really close the clamp up and make it difficult for me to get in there. So we'll see how this goes. First clamp. One quick motion. Cut the membrane and cut that rear muscle see where it was attached right there at the tip of my knife so now it's pretty easy cut that front muscle make sure everything's free on that side and there's a little mem membrane left up there cut that free try to leave it attached to the shell not the clam on the other side That's pretty much free. You just kind of rub it off the last attachment there. So if you look here, there's still some of that membrane left. So get hold of it with the knife and just kind of peel it back. And there's a little bit up here too, so 
just t trying to make this job 50-50. Connie does the second half, which we'll show you. But Clean up that. Find that membrane there. Don't want to eat that. And next step, dark part on the end, snip that off. You can save that for uh, bait for Might catching some save, fish. Save that for uh, fish bait or it's really good uh, clam bait too, or crab bait I mean. Now there's that zipper right up there. Try to center up the knife. I'm trying to, doing this a little awkward, trying to do it so I, we get it on film and then just continue right up through the neck. Both chambers of the neck. There's two chambers in the neck so do the, to the top one that way then I go back in the other way and just open it up like that. Now this one's fairly nice and clean but there's a little dip, bit of debris in there. Some of them if, if the shell is broken have a lot of debris and sand so I'll try to Get that as clean as possible for Connie in the next step. Okay, now for part two of this process, Connie's going to take those two clams that I uh, just shelled out. Get the lot of guts out of there, and that little clear thingy me bob always pops up at you. I don't get too obsessive about every little bit because um, the clams are, you can eat the entire thing, guts and all. You do that with uh, steamer clams, but I don't want to eat that much guts. And this part in the center is a little bitter, so scrape that out. And that is that. Mostly rinsing the sand off is, um, that's one thing that I am really picky about. And this one was really nice and unbroken, so there is, it's easy, easy to rinse the sand off. I, since we have this many, I'm probably uh, going to separate and not really worry about keeping it all intact with the digger connected, but it's kind of nice when they are all in one piece. pride myself on being able to keep it together. So these are the clam bodies with the neck. That one's got digger on it still. Oh, sorry. But um, those we are going to... Uh, I've already vacuum bagged eight packages of those bodies for uh, eating this winter. I got uh, diggers in this one, and those little tiny muscles are the, uh, I think it's called the abductor muscle, it holds the, uh, the clam body to the shell. So there's four of those on each clam. And they're tasty little morsels, but they kind of get lost in the process when we're frying them. So. What we're going to do with these, the diggers and those little abductor muscles, is can them for um, can them in half pint jars for uh, use in clam chowder, clam dip, that sort of thing. And this here, this by the way, is when I'm vacuum bagging. I like to lay them out on the towel like this. Um, it's when the moisture off. Then I pat the top side with. Uh, a lot of paper towels to dry them off. You get a lot better sealing with my uh, vacuum sealer doing it that way. But anyway, these here, there's some diggers and some body parts. I'm actually going to uh, put these in a marinade overnight and uh, drop them in my smoker tomorrow. I did that once before and it really was surprisingly really good. So I'm going to, for clam rinse right now, um, 80 clams. So I'm going to give some to our buddy Drew and smoke some, eat some fresh tomorrow. 
I mean, creepy. Clam. All right, folks. So what uh, Connie's doing here now is uh, mincing up those diggers and uh, packing them in the jars. I don't have enough jars out. This is actually going to be quite a bit. We got one, two, three there for so far, and yeah, we got. We also. Uh, Bought about 25 pounds of uh, tuna, albacore tuna loins when they were down there too. So we're going to be canning, canning up these clams. Like I said earlier for chowder and dip and stuff like that. It wasn't that. as a razor clam catch, cook and eat. We will get back to that of course. I mentioned uh, last of my talks to you that uh, we picked up some uh, tuna loins in this port as well. That was about 25 pounds. So, um, this is not your star-kissed uh, clams tuna enough for can. dinner that we cut, dug up yesterday, and I just dried them a little, off a little bit with on a paper towel, put them in an egg wash, beaten egg and milk, and then in some cracker crumbs, bread crumbs, a little bit of both of those, just because that's what I had and especially since I dried the clams off there it sticks on pretty good and that is ready to cook we're gonna pan fry these I've had them deep fried and I like deep fried well, it up. when someone else does it did you go in the like pan so um, you know, using an electric fry pan what what's your temperature setting on that it's uh, pretty hot. I got it about 400 degrees, so they don't cook too long. And I'm using peanut oil. Use whatever kind of vegetable oil you like. I like peanut oil that doesn't seem like it smokes and uh, burns at the high temperatures. And you just flat fry. Like so. I wanted it done right, you should have hired a pro. So how long do you cook them? Until they're brown, and then I'm going to flip them and brown them on the other side. Um, you, you want to kind of stand back. Sometimes clams get very poppy, and um, yeah, stand back is my advice. You see those clam strips look yummy, I think. Whoa. Son of a gun! Ah, hope. Ah, Did, ah yeah. in the face. Forewarned, and yeah, that flipped itself over. Okay, that's big for some good video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say you aren't warned out there. These clams will explode. And yeah. Good idea. Probably to not be doing it in short sleeve. <laughs> Should have uh, safety goggles or something on, even, huh? Yeah, well, I've never done that. Oh, they are you talking. It's not too old to learn your tricks. It might not be a You know, I used to wear glasses. Maybe they served as That's safety one of those, goggles. One of those face shields, like some of the uh, clerks are wearing in the stores nowadays. Okay. Yeah. That's that nice golden brown right there that you're looking for. When they're like that on both sides they're done. Don't overcook them. If overcook them, drive all, all the moisture out of the inside, they get they get very, very tough. So what do you say? It was like what, a couple couple minutes on one side? A couple minutes on the other? Yep. So with that temperature setting, a couple minutes more or less on each side, looking for that golden brown color. When they're that color on the other side, it's time to pull them out. And you see Connie's got a uh, plate with a bunch of paper towels on it. 